Hello everybody and before we get into the video I am very happy to announce that we are doing a giveaway today brought to you by TCGplayer.com so thank you very much TCG Player, for sponsoring this video so today we are going to be giving away a Theros Beyond Death collector's booster pack so for those who don't know what that is it contains a guaranteed two foil of the new Theros Beyond Death full art basic lands as well as a chance at a plethora of different extended art cards borderless cards and constellation alternate art Art cards so very beautiful stuff so to enter all you have to do is subscribe to the video hit the like button and leave a comment down below letting me know your favorite art in magic the gathering so just letting you guys know this giveaway is USA only unfortunately but anyways thanks again to TCG player for sponsoring this giveaway you should go and check them out in the link down below as tcgplayer.com is the number one place on the internet to pick up magic the gathering singles and sealed product and you can pick up your Theros cards very cheap right now before they go up because it is officially day number one of release so go ahead and get your Theros singles in the link down below and thanks again to TCG player feel free to enter the giveaway and with that let's get right on to the video hope you enjoy hello everybody and welcome back to another pioneer gameplay video today we are checking out Gallia of the Endless Dance in an RG Seder Agro Zoo deck so Gallia of the Endless Dance gives us something that we've never had in a zoo style strategy before, which is card draw on a very aggressive creature. And conveniently, Burning Tree Emissary perfectly chains into Gallia. So this package is probably gonna be an RG aggro dex for many years to come. And not only that, but it's also a Lord for satyrs and it's got haste. The stars have aligned. This card is just perfect for RG aggro. And we're not only checking out Gallia today, but we're also trying out Clothis God of Destiny, the new God replacing Xenogod. So if conveniently, if you chain Burning Tree into Gallia and then you follow up with Clothies, you are just one devotion away from having Clothies active as a creature. And he also provides a lot of resilience because he's indestructible, can't be removed, and like if you're dying to removal and you're getting your board swept, he's just gonna start exiling things from graveyards and dealing the opponent some damage, gaining you life. So RG aggro might just be better now than it ever was. So I'm super hyped, we're gonna check it out. So as always, hit that like button down below if you're hyped for today's video. It really helps the algorithm, helps video get out there into more recommended sections. And with that, let's get right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. Gallia of the Endless Dance is a hasty satyr lord, and if you attack with three or more creatures, so basically battalion, you get to draw a card, or draw two cards, and then discard a card at random. So straight up strictly card advantage when she gets battalion, which is amazing, but she's also, like we just mentioned a million times, a lord for satyrs, so we can play a few different kinds of satyrs in this RG aggro deck that we have previously have been unplayable. So Fire Drinker Satyr was an old one mana two one back from, um, I forget which set it was, but this card as a one mana two one is just barely barely not playable with that little bit of a downside there's better options in your one drop slot and now because of Gallia, we can play this little one mana two one that was lost and forgotten and now Gallia will turn it into a one mana three two haste that is a really big buff if you play Gallia first and then that and then boon satyr is another super underrated satyr that never has been able to see play Gallia is going to turn it into a three mana five three haste also that bestow ability is very underrated on it. Boon Satyr is just a very underrated card in general. You can bestow onto a creature instant speed and give it plus four, plus two, and that can be just game winning. That can be the pump you need to win the game. And then if that creature dies, it falls off and just becomes another four, two creature again. It's really amazing. And then let's move on to the next package. Like we said, Burning Tree Emissary, uh, jumps perfectly right into Gallia, but if you don't have a Gallia, you can Burning Tree into Burning Tree, or you can Burning Tree into Voltaic Brawler. And Voltaic Brawler only has two uses out of its ability, but it is a two mana four three trample, which you cannot go wrong with in a Gruul aggro deck. It's also very good because of the fact that Burning Tree has two power and Voltaic Brawler has three. 
because let's move on to our evolved dudes. Experiment one and um, Pelt Collector are going to get pumped one into two after Burning Tree into Voltaic Brawler. Double pump, get their counters on them and they grow even huger. And also um, the Boon Seder is really good for triggering it as well. So these guys are just gonna be our ideal one drops on the first turn so that after we start the Burning Tree shenanigans, they'll go really thick. And let's go on to the next package. We are trying out, this is our beef package, the Clothies God of Destiny. Um, actually with the burning trees, it makes it quite easy to turn on Clothies and he can be a four or five indestructible or he can just start exiling things from the graveyard and blasting your opponent's face every turn, which is very resilient, really good against the board wipe strategies because you still have a form of aggression. And then of course we have Questing Beast at the very top end because why not? It has a lot of abilities on it. You learn a new thing every time you read this card, you can't go wrong with it. Then let's move on to our pump package of Atarka's Command because if we're going super wide with burning trees, it's really nice to use Atarka's Command to just pump the whole team, get him for three damage. This thing, Atarka's Command, can deal like a lot of damage on its own, like up to like seven damage. It's really insane in a, in a deck like this, a zoo strategy. And then Gore Clan Rampager, again, another four mana, four, four trampler at the top end, um, but we can blood rush it for two mana and give a creature plus four, plus four and trample. And that's really good for just reach in there. If your opponent's at a very little bit of amount of life and you just need to get them down, just for the last little bits of damage um blood rushing that gore clan rampager works very well and then i have a little bit of removal spells because i wanted to get some blockers out of the way so the bone crusher giant can also be another four three body to pump the uh pell collector in experiment one but also is a shock effect with that stomp ability and wild slash just because i wanted another shock effect but i wanted something cheaper to lower the curve a little bit so i put in a singleton wild slash we got a total of 22 lands. Seems like a reasonable number. We do have a little bit of top end at the four mana slot. So 22 should get us onto that uh, on curve most of the time. So let's move on to the sideboard. If I do change it, I will let you know right now, as always. Oh, we got two copies of Rending Volley. This is for the Spirits decks, decks that are playing things like Spell Queller and things of that nature. Good against like there's a lot of monastery mentor decks going around as well then we have two copies of cinder vines this can be a naturalized effect as well as an anti-storming effect and the uh what do you call it the lotus field storm deck is going around like the plague it is everywhere right now and cinder vines is going to make them take a damage every time they cast a spell so if they're trying to storm off uh, we should be able to get enough damage off of cinder vines to reach them because we will be aggroing them out in the first few turns and then cinder vines if they try to storm off should get them and then we have a play set of Destructive Revelry against any deck that is running mono artifacts and enchantments and whatnot. And I expect there to be a lot of enchantments just because the new Theros Beyond Death is an enchantment set. So uh, there should be a lot of Enchantress decks around. It should. I don't know if we're going to run into much, but we'll see. Uh, and then we have a play set of Domri's Ambush. Now this is our cheap removal spell from the sideboard to bring it against little aggro decks and decks with mana dorks so it gives the creature a 1-1 counter and it fights a creature so that's gonna make our dudes bigger so we can deal more damage and also fight off it doesn't really fight it deals the creature deals damage equal to its power to a creature the opponent controls so that's just basically our replacement for searing blaze because in a zoo deck i feel like we can make more use of that 1-1 counter and then we have three copies of roast against any deck that's going to produce chunky fat blockers and mono green is one of the most common decks in pioneer so roast is going to be an all-star in that matchup so that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Got a game here against the wide, the wide Quazzle 11. And we're going to be on the draw here with some Gruul Seder Aggro. We're going to mulligan. And this one, I would probably keep it if it had a burning tree. Although actually, if I do find a land off the top, I go Pell Collector into Pell Collector Fire Drinker and then Gallia, which is a good curve. I'm not going to go to five, so I'm going to keep that and throw away Clothis for now because it's too clunky. So I have two chances to top deck a land here, and I got my land nice. All right, Pell Collector, number one, go. So this is blue-white control. Okay, it's blue-red, so that's actually arguably worse because they can have cheaper sweepers. Cheaper sweepers like sweltering suns and flame sweep and radiant flames and things like that so they got scarier sweepers actually than than a supreme verdict would be but we got to play into it we can't just hold back aggro decks attack and that's what, exactly what we're gonna do 
What are they trying to do with this? So whenever creature enters, so they're just the uh, Imperial Voyager. What what is that thing called? The um, let's play Galia here. Compensators. And trigger Galia. Say yes. Throw away a Voltaic Brawler and get a Boon Seder and an Experiment One. Nice. So next turn I get two Hasty Seders. So they don't have a Flame Sleep here. What is that um that blue red guy that gets Thopters? The Imperial Voyager? No, that's the blue green guy. The Whirler Virtuoso or whatever it's called. Thopter Virtuoso. That's probably what their deck is based around. All right, let's go experiment one here and let's go with two hasty satyrs. Pump the Pell Collectors and experiment ones. Go with another satyr and they are all hasty. Get in there for a million. And yes, I'll draw two cards. Get a stomp. Yeah, they scoop it up now. I accidentally revealed my hand. Thanks, Moto. People have been complaining about that reveal hand thing for so long, for years. That right when you're clicking OK here and the game ends, it automatically clicks reveal hand because it stalls out on that button. Um, but it's all good. They probably expected us to have Bone Crusher Giant anyways. So let's go on to game number two against blue red stuff. Probably want destructive revelry. And that's probably it. Like Rose could do something, I'm not sure though. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to do Destructive Revelry. I'll cut the, the Gore Clan and Bushwhacker on the draw. And Clothis on the draw. And just run it like that, I guess. I mean, I feel like... I don't like Clothis on the draw. Let's bring in a Roast. I feel like Roast might do something here. Or maybe I just bring in Domri's Ambush. Yeah. But, like, if they install Artifact on something, like, maybe, like, Roast would be more useful. However, I do have Destructive Revelry for that stuff, and if they have, I'm pretty sure because of that module thing they had, I'm pretty sure they got that 3 mana 2-3 guy, the Whirler Virtuoso. So I'm gonna bring in Dami's Ambush instead. Just one. For now. And I have a feeling Wild Slash is not gonna do much here, even though we saw Bowmat Courier. Okay, this hand is actually sad we don't have red on the first turn. Uh, I don't know about this hand. Not having a one drop, like on the draw especially, we want to catch up with our opponent. I think we need a more aggressive hand than that. Okay, this is better. Let's keep that. This is actually great. This is amazing. Keep that, and I th think I'm gonna... Okay, it's either, it's either Voltaic Brawler or Gallia. But I'd rather have Voltaic Brawler or Gallia here. So I can go turn one experiment, turn two, burning tree, burning tree, something. Gallia draws me cards. Yeah, I guess I guess it's Gallia. So throw away the brawler. Ooh. Fire drinker Seder. Just don't have a sweeper, that's all I ask. Charter course, something spicy is happening. Alright, what are they discarding? Just a mountain. Alright, take this opponent. Oh, I added a target's command. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Make some manners. Play a second burning tree. Make some manners. Gallia, and get in there for four. Now, please don't have a flame sweep or a sweltering suns or a Kozilek's return. Okay, triple blue. Cool. Aether Sphere is kind of scary, but I brought in Destructive Revelries. And now, <laughs> this is amazing. Play a Fire Drinker Seder, a Tarkus Command, pump the team, deal damage, go in for what I presume is lethal. And yeah, that was a turn three kill. That was a turn three kill. With Gruel negative, we dealt 17 damage in one swing on turn three with Pioneer Gruel Satyrs. Dude, what the actual heck? This is insane. Man, Burning Tree Gallia, what a combination. And then just making the Fire Drinker Satyrs until one mana, three, two hasty boys after that, then following up the Targus Command. Yeah, that was, I think that was the nuttiest curve out we could have possibly gotten in this deck. Got a game here against Mind Warp 89. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some RG Seder Aggro and Pioneer. 
and we only got a basic mountain and we need green so gonna mull this one is much better let's keep that and throw away um an experiment one and now we go pell collector in a burning tree gallia and we can turn gallia on start drawing some cards it is a little bit of painful mana base but being on the play wait are we on the play i think we're on the play yeah we are on the play okay this is good on the play all right pell collector go so i'm not really fearing my life total from these mana confluences that much being on the play and being the the aggressor watery grave so yeah uh sometimes they run one main board like sweeper like one main board they usually run one or two main board languishes but i'm talking about the three drop ones like cry of the carnarium sometimes they do run one in the main board i'm hoping they don't if this is demure aggro but it could still be any number of things you know like five color niv or soul tire wilderness reclamation so do you run dispute in edh what is dispute are you talking about mystical dispute oh ni mystical disputing uro yeah it's kind of weird god erasure takes our pill collector that is fine galia is gonna get me the value that i want Come on, it's Argus Command. Questing Beast. All right, let's go to combat. All right, Galia. All right, Galia. I'm gonna need you to draw me into a Targus Command here. Oh, boom! There it is. All right. Perfect. So now we knock him down to a very low life total. I think four. And now two of our threats are lethal. Yeah, that's four. All right, trap four. Now questing beast, if we ever get up to it, is lethal if they do sweep our board here. Let's see if they do run the one main board, cry the carnarium, or flame tendrils, or drown in sorrow. Let's see. Third mana. Thoughtsies. All right. Information. He's getting information. And conceding. All right. Game number two against blue black control. I know exactly what I'm bringing in. We're bringing in the Cinder Vines, the Chandras, and the Scab Clan Berserkers. Punish them for casting spells, and then Walker, that's going to be hard for them to deal with. So, Colothes is good here. On the draw, cut Gore Clan, Bushwhacker, one Brawler. No, actually, hold on. Hold on. Cut Wild Slashes. Okay, I guess cut the one Brawler and one Experiment 1. And run it like that. All right. Sure. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Um, that's a lot of questing beasts. All this hand really has is just Pell Collector, Voltaic, Brawler. It feels really slow. And they're gonna, like, thought seize my questing beasts before I get the chance to play them. Uh, I'm gonna keep it, though. Like, it doesn't feel mullable. Like, it's it has turn one and two good plays, but, like, not super aggressive. Watery Grave is going to enter tapped. Not going to shock and thought seize against us. And I, I bet they cut thought seizes. Okay, I drew the land that I needed for, uh, for the questing beast, but still very slow. Pushes it right away. Before it gets the chance to collect a pelt. Oh, that's a Clothis. All right, let's slam this Voltaic Brawler past the turn. Come on, don't, don't, don't thought erasure me, dude. Don't thought erasure me. This is my Clothis. There's many like it, but this one is mine. Oh, a Frank Sanity Mill. 
That's a fire drinker stater, but I'm gonna windmill slam this Colothis. Get in there for four. Let's pay our energies. Knock you down to 16. Okay, maybe they're playing the traumatized combo. So if they have traumatized, I get one shot killed. I get entirely milled out. Unless I have an odd number of cards so that I'm left with one left. And they had another push. Tome Scour. Uh oh. I get milled for 10 here and Thought Seize. Okay, good thing I have a backup questing beast. Takes one of my beasts. And now I get milled for five more. Exile Thought Seize. Questing beast. Get in there for four. Okay. Two more turns. Oh, they did nothing! They did nothing! Exile Tome Scar. Deal two to you. Oh, Scab Clan Berserker as well. And yeah, they're dead. All right, stomped them. Oh man, that cloth is really does a lot of work, dude. Really does a lot of work. In a match like that, when you're trying to thought seize us a bunch, and then I can get a clothies down, and you're just gonna start taking inevitably two damage every basically sulfuric vortex that is an indestructible enchantment that is really hard to deal with. So yeah, in a grind fest, man, gruel, like I said, gruel aggro might just be more strong than ever right now. Like it Honestly, might be one of the best decks right now. It it is one of the best decks right now. You know, Clothis and Gallia just add so much new elements to it. I love it a lot. Oh man, we got a game here against Zernak. That's a buddy of mine, and he plays. He's been uh, grinding out lots of wins with uh, Fires of Invention, and it is absolutely an anti aggro deck. All right, let's see if he said anything to me. I'm about to lose, lol. Alright, we're going to keep this hand. <laughs> he says hi. All right, we're starting on experiment one here. All right, he's not on fires. And Offenza, Kintry Spirit. All right, Rootbound Crag, Burning Tree. Oh, he's on the Heliod, he's on Heliod. And a Voltaic Brawler, pump the dudes again. So this can be very, very, very annoying if he's got a Boros Reckoner here. Please. Okay, thank you, no Boros Reckoner. All right, let's go to combat, just swing all, get a trig, and then I'll flash in Boon Seder. All right, Flash and Boon Seder. Pump the experiment one. Yeah, he scoops. Too much aggro. <laughs> All right. On to sideboarding. Um, against this deck, I for sure want the Domri's Ambushes and Roasts and Fry. Fry hits... Uh, wait, no, 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 no. Tire creature flying this... Or tire creature that's white or blue. Wait. Fry deals fight on a creature or planeswalkers. Yeah, okay, Fry. Um, so all that junk. Cut a Gore Clan. Cut the Cloth Theses. Cut the Bushwhacker on the draw. 
Cut one voltaic, one experiment. Run it like that. Okay. All this removal should be toasty. Yeah. Yeah, I know what I said, Evan. <laughs> Did you summon Zernak here, Evan, to fight me? All right, we got a decent keep. I'm going to try it. We got removal. Owl Seed of Life's Bounty. All right. No blocks. Anafenza. Okay, well, I kind of want to roast Anafenza. Or let's uh, Domri's Ambush. And next turn, I can go Fire Drinker plus roast on something, too. Always watching. Ouch. All right, well... I guess I'm gonna Domri's Ambush again. Down to 18. I got Rose for the record. Oh, Rose is just gonna deal damage to my face though. Or not to me, to one of my creatures. Okay, thank goodness I can roast that. Just barely. Alright, let's get in there. And then a target's command at the tip of it. Should be good. No, Lyra, don't you play? Okay, thank you. Galia, time to get in there in a Tarkus command. I'm sorry, Zernak, for ruining your league. Stasis Snare. Gonna hit Galia. Alright, get in there. Trigger. Say yes. Uh, three damage plus one plus one. Boom! Explosion. You're dead. <laughs> Alright, we stomped him. Shoutouts to my buddy Zernak. You should go and check him out on YouTube. Z-Y-R-N-A-K. Tell him Marin sent ya. Got a game here against AVB, and we're gonna be on the draw here with some Gruel Satyrs and Pioneer, and we got Double Clothis, which is a little awkward, and uh, this Bushwhacker's awkward without a burning tree and a third land, so I think I'm gonna mull. I think I can do better than that. This is probably better. I'm gonna keep it and throw away Mana Confluence. So I'm hoping that they play like something I can stomp so I can Burning Tree stomp something. You don't drink enough water? Yeah, that was my problem. I like sometimes like 10 hours will go by and I'd be like, whoa, I didn't drink anything in that 10 hours. Like, cause I just, I don't really get thirsty. But now like I'm, I'm gonna go on a diet. I'm gonna try to lose weight cause like, I, I've been putting on the weight, like, having a job behind the computer screen, like, all day and not being active. So I've kind of, like, put some weight back on and I'm going to try to lose it now. So I'm going to drink a lot of water because drinking a lot of water is really good for losing weight. So, um, like, this whole gallon right here, which is not a gallon, it's it's one liter short of a gallon, but that's still a lot of water. This, this right here is five bottles of water, like your typical drinking bottle of water. So I'm going to try to drink minimum that much in a day. So every morning I'm just going to fill that up and drink that much, guaranteed. Alright, Breeding Pool is actually kind of scary because it could be the, uh, the ramp deck. But if it is the ramp deck, hopefully it's just like the land ramp variant so that we can just walk all over them for now. Alright, let's go Burning Tree. Actually, we can do that second main phase. Get in there for two. Burning Tree, make some mana into Fire Drinker Seder, pass the turn. So they don't have sweepers in, the, in this color combination. So w our job here is to just aggro them out really quick. Yeah, see, it is a Nissa's Pilgrimage version, like I just mentioned. So we can race them, but if they have, um, I'm actually just going to cast Bone Crusher here. If they have um, Cavalier Thorns here, that'd be pretty annoying. 
And it would deal five damage to us with our Fire Drinker Satyrs attacking into it, but I still got to keep swinging. So I'm hoping to draw like an Antarx Command here, and they do have the Cavalier of Thorns. Hydro Crisis actually, which gains them life, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. Um... All right, well, let's play a forest so that I can double plump here. Let's get in with everything. If they want to eat burning tree, cool. All right, um, so I can get in here for 10. I do want to play experiment one though, so let's just pump one of these. And get the burning tree out, or the experiment one out. So now double pump, these are basically three twos, and I think I should have it here. We gotta have two blockers. Uro is actually really good against us because it gains them three life. But what can they really do here to keep them alive for this amount of mana? Forcer, I'm assuming? Well, they're Krasis for two, that's fine. Oh, it's Argus Command and that's how it ends. All right, let's pump here. And a Targus Command. And get in there and it is basically over. <laughs> All right, nice. Let's go on to the next game. So against blue-green ramp, it's very scary. That deck seems really good with Uro to ramp into big hydrate crises. That actually seems really good. Um, so Scab Clan seems like it would do something, but seeing as how they have Uros and, and hydrate crises, it might not. But they do have some big rampy spells. Like if they have like Nissa's Renewal, it's gonna be pretty scary. Fry just barely does not kill. Uro when it awakens and uh, it kills Hydra Crisis, but at that point it's whatever. Um, yeah, I don't think I really need anything. Like, I was thinking maybe Domri's Ambush kills Hydra Crisis, but I think I just gotta be super mega aggressive and run it right back. Chandra's not terrible, like, over Wild Slash, but I feel like our job here is just to be as hyper aggro as humanly possible. And just try to beat them before they can ramp into their bombs. So, let's do it. That looks good. I do want something better for Burning Tree to, to get into. So, hopefully, like, a, a Seder. Hopefully, I draw a Fire Drinker Seder. Gore Clan. Alright, let's go for Pelt Collector. And pass the turn. So, I would like to draw a good thing to Burning Tree into. Atarka's Command, well, I guess I'll just go Burning Tree into Experiment 1. Or you know what? Actually, I'm going to actually do Atarka's Command here. My reason being is that next turn I have 3 mana so I can go Experiment 1 plus one of these things. It fits better with my mana curve. So get them down to 14. Do they have an Uro here to get back up to 17? Nissa's Pilgrimage is fine. Okay, there's a forest. Go experiment one here. And let's Gore Clan Rampager here so that next turn, next turn we attack his command. So let's Gore Clan. They're down to six, and their target's command should do it. I don't think there's anything we can do to do with our board here. Even a Cavalier Thorns won't get it. Our Boil Grazer is an annoying blocker, but it doesn't win them the game. Hydra Crisis on two. That doesn't get it either. Something good? Fire Drinker Seder. All right, well, that pumps our experiment one and evolve. And we get in. And. We a Targus Command. RG. That's not going to get it, but it's going to get them to two and eat their board. Oh, gets them to one, actually. And now you got to deal with everything. Let's see what you got. There could be something that I'm forgetting. Like, what if they have a Palaka Worm? <laughs> that would be crazy. Um, 
For four green mana. Three green mana. Four green mana. Five. That is fine. Uro's fine. That's not getting it, dude. You can make a blocker, but you're still dead. You passing? Yeah, they're scooping. All right, see, so this this deck, like, this is kind of like, think about modern. So this deck, the blue-green ramp slash mono-green ramp, is kind of like the Tron of Pioneer. And we are like the burn of Pioneer. So it's kind of like in modern Tron versus burn. Burn always wins because they're too aggressive and beat Tron before they can actually assemble anything crazy. So that's kind of what's going on here. So they're just ramping and we're getting underneath them really quickly and just beating them before they can get to their bombs. And that, so that's why it's a good matchup for us. Got a game here against we fold for food and I think... I think I'm gonna keep this hand hoping that they're in a creature deck. Seeing as how they have a Chandra avatar, I assume they are. Because I can go turn one wild slash something and then turn two Gallia or stomp something. And then Gallia turns Boon Seder into a three mana five three haste. So that's the plan. Nice island you got there. Okay. Oh, Pell Collector, there's something to do. Nice. They're going to opt in response. So, it could be a plethora of things. I'm expecting red mana for some reason. Double blue. Ooh. Alright, well, let's just get out Gallia here. Hope they don't syncopate it or censor it. They don't. And I get a counter here. Are they going to flash into rattle chains? Anticipate. Okay, is this the mono blue or the blue white Aether Flux deck I put on YouTube? <laughs> it's the only Pioneer deck I know that plays Anticipate. Okay, blue black. I think I'm just gonna throw out a Boon Seder here for the hasty beats. And then get that nice, sweet Gallia value. Nyx Blue Mansion with Flash and Selvala is fun. Oh, true. Selvala would then tap for how much? 15 mana, and then your lands would tap for even more. Thassa's Oracle. Okay, so Thassa Oracle shenanigans are happening. So they get to look at the top X, the top two cards, put one on top and the rest on bottom. So they're fixing the top two cards of their library and getting the blocker. Um, but that's fine. It is good as a 1-3 to blocker stuff. Hmm, yeah, I think I'm just going to go Boon Seder, swing all, get that value. Get the Trigs, the Toasty Trigs on Pelt Collector. Oh no, they're Fatal Pushing. Oh man. We're still doing good things, though. Their Thassa's Oracle doesn't block this board very well. We got many things to throw out. Okay, so now I think I want to just, like, Wild Slash Pastomp their Thassa's Oracle so I can get in. Um, and not have them chump. But that's kind of cute. Let's just get in. Or you know what I should have done? Is I should have just went Pell Collector plus... Hard cast Bone Crusher in the first main phase so that I can get this thing bigger. Alright, that's happening. Are they chumping? They are not chumping. Alright, so... Spearman 1. Do I want a hard cast Bone Crusher? No, I'm gonna Pell Collector because I can EOT Stomp and then I have enough mana to untap and go Wild Slash plus Bone Crusher. And they're missing their land drops. They were Thassa's oracling to look for land drops. Are they forced to put one on top? Put one of them on top. Yeah, see, they're forced to. All right, so with that on the stack, let's stomp them. 
and they're gonna take two damage off Thoughtsy, so that that already does what I wanted to do with Wild Slash. So that Thoughtsy is fine. They're probably doing that just to get information. Yeah, and they're scooping it up. All right, they got a little bit land screwed there. Unfortunate for them, but they got a chance here in game number two being on the play. So against that kind of deck, I think I want the Chandras because I feel like they're gonna sweep us. Uh, Scab Clan Berserker seems quite nice. And uh, Cinder Vines seems quite nice. And that's all I really want. So I think I'm going to cut Wild Slashes. And I think I'm going to cut one Voltaic Brawler, one Experiment 1, and one... Uh, probably one... Maybe the Gore Clan. And maybe the Reckless Bushwhacker, but I don't know. Yeah, on the draw, I don't like Reckless Bushwhacker as much on the draw, I guess. Sure, we'll run it like that. We need Galia to get his value. It should be good, though. Alright, this hand looks great. Uh, this Rootbound Crag is actually quite awkward. Let's keep this. If I don't draw land, I think I might start on Rootbound Crag so that I can Burning Tree into Experiment 1 Fire Drinker next turn. Yeah, let's do that. Ooh, that is another burning tree. All right, opponent, please don't deal with it. Good. Into another burning tree. Now, please don't have like a some kind of sweeper, like flame tendrils. They got double blue though. All right, experiment one. Fire drinker. Eight power on turn two. And then I can just attack his command. And is that already lethal? That's, that's not, but that's, I think, 15 damage. Yeah, that's 15 damage on turn three. And after they sweep us, this Clothis is going to be nice, unless they have a sweeper that exiles. Like Flame Tendrils. All right, Gallia is pretty cool. Um, They shocked. They shocked for a reason. Um... I, I would I would hate to discard Cloth of Saratarka's command, but I think I do go Gallia. Yeah, it's only two less damage than no, it's not two less damage than Antarka's command, it's way less. I'm dealing ten as opposed to let's see, um with the Targus command it would be fifteen, so it'd be five less damage. But I would get to draw cards. And they shocked, so they're holding up probably a push. Okay, I think we're going to do another card flip, guys. Let's see. Top card of the day is Seething Song. If it's heads, we're going Atarka's Command. If it's tails, we're going Gallia. So heads is heads is Atarka's Command. Oh, it fell. It fell. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. All right. One more time. It is tails. We're going Gallia. Trying to get that young card advantage. Let's go to combat now that the Seder also is pumped, so it's actually four less damage. And they're killing the Gallia. I was right, they were holding up a push, but I do get in here for still a good amount, and anything is lethal next to a Targus command's lethal. They're shocking again. Do they have the flame tendrils? Kalidus. Oh, I win here. I win here. Because a Targus command makes them unable to gain life. All right, so your opponents can't get alive three damage to each opponent. Yep, doesn't matter. Pump or three damage, it's it's still game. GG. All right, they got a little bit mana screwed. Like they had to, they were struggling to find their black source there, and they had to shock twice for it. So that was a little unfortunate of a position for them. Um, but yeah, stomped them. Got a game here against a Lobo MLT, and we're gonna be on the play. Wait. I think he just snap kept. I th I'm pretty sure he just snap kept. I'm gonna keep this hand though. That looks pretty good. I got Pell Collector into Experiment One Fire Drinker, Pump Pump, and then a Tarkus Command. So that's as aggressive as it gets without a Burning Tree. Yeah. What's up, Mr. Ash? 
You've already got a 6 IV Aegis Slash, but why do you need Aegis Slash to be 6 IV? You have it mixed? Because I, I know I, I used to run mixed Aegis Slash back in uh, X and Y because I would run like, you know, Sacred Sword, Shadow Snake, Shadow Ball, and then like King Shield. I know I would do that. Okay, so it's mono black. So this is actually a pretty bad matchup because they have a uh, they have gifted Aetherborn and Kalidus and a lot of removal. So um, there's that. But I don't think a, a Thoughtseize really screws us here unless they take my experiment one. And they did take my experiment one. All right. Well, I got Gallia, so I'm gonna go Gallia because it makes my Satyrs next turn hasty. You're so out of touch with Pokemon. You gotta get back in it, dude. Pokemon's great. Temtem also just came out if you want to play that. Temtem's been in the making for a long time. Yorox Fenlurker is gonna get rid of one of my Fire Drinker Satyrs. So I only got one red. Come on, give me a red source. And I didn't. All right, so play Pell Collector. Play Fire Drinker Satyr. Go to combat. Swing, get Battalion, activate Gallia. I'm gonna say yes. Ooh, we got a Clothis and a Burning Tree. Come on, can I get a land at the top so I can go Burning Tree and a Clothis? So it looks like it's not your typical mono black. It looks like it might be Davriel 8 Rack or it could be, um, you know, something along the lines of that. Ooh, Burning Tree into Voltaic Brawler. I will take that. So I just want them to really not have a Yeheni's expertise here. Do you have the new X-Pack already with the Galarian birds? What, what is X-Pack? I don't know what you're talking about. But no, Corviknight has been on my, my to-do list to breed. And I have not bred Corviknight because Corviknight is so spiky. Everyone in the meta is running Corviknight. I like to run under the radar things. But I like even though I'm not spiky, I do run Dracovish a lot. I love me some Dracovish. And right, we discard Clothies to draw Pell Collector and Voltaic Brawler. Gallia is so good. I don't think they live here unless they yeah, they they would need um yeah, they need a, a sweeper. But they're going down on lands here, so it has to be... What? Oh, they're just scooping. Alright. Nice little tap-tap concede. It wasn't just a tap concede. But we'll go to the sideboarding against Mono Black. This is actually going to be very difficult, despite how easy we won there. Um, I see, like, Scab Clan Berserker not being bad, because I really don't think they're your typical Mono Black. I think they are on, um... Something more big and mid-range and gary -y. Like, they're definitely mono-black devotion with Garys. And I know they're going to have Gifted Aetherborn and Kalidus and stuff like that. So I'm bringing in Roasts for sure. Domri's Ambush gets rid of, um, gets rid of, uh, the Gifted Aetherborn. And it doesn't fight. The creature deals damage to the creature. So it doesn't, like, trade with the Aetherborn. It just straight up kills it. So... I like Chandra here, even though they're gonna have, like, murderous riders. Still, so, like, they're probably gonna use them on our cheap creatures, and then Chandra's will be good to go. And I feel like it's gonna be a slow matchup. Like, Clothis is good here, because they're gonna kill and thought sees a lot of my stuff. Um, let's cut the single Gore Clan. I don't like it on the draw. Um, you know, Bone Crushers, you know, Bone Crushers are fine. Uh, and then let's cut one, one experiment one. I guess I'll do it like that. I'm kind of tempted to bring Domri's Ambush. I'm just going to do one to try it. Let's do one and let's cut one Brawler. Chandra could be a good top deck war. Chandra would be good, I think. He always, why does he keep snap keeping? What is happening? All right, this hand gets destroyed by Thoughtseize, but then again, mulliganing. Mulliganing against a Thoughtseize deck is not ideal. Um, but this hand just looks like it's going to fall apart to one single spell. So I'm going to mull 
look for more action. That's better. But still not exciting. Um, I think I'm gonna bottom the bushwhacker. Alright, so Gallia turns the Boonsader into a 5-3 haste. Don't thought seize me. Freaking, yeah, see, I told you it was Davriel 8 rack. No, it just skipped through my turn. It just skipped through my turn, dude. Now I don't get to attack with Gallia. That's so stupid. That is so dumb. Noxious Grasp. Well, I'm just gonna flash in a Boon Seder here. That was so dumb. Yarok's Fen Lurker is going to get rid of probably Domri's Ambush. Maybe it's Fire Tree. No, because they, they would have played a Gifted Aether board if they had one. So I'm just going to get rid of Domri's Ambush. I don't think they have it. Unless they're looking for a land for Kalidus and then, which then I would be sad. All right, so Boon Seder. Green, green, whatever. Untap. There's a Stomp. All right, I'm going to play that. So let's just get in with the Boon Seder and then just play a Bone Crusher. If they flame tendrils me, I'm going to be so sad. I could play Fire Drinker and then and then stomp their Fen Lurker. Yeah. Let's just do that. Play Fire Drinker, hold up Stomp, and then I'll just untap and I'll have Bone Crusher ready to cast. All right, stomp this Fen Lurker. So that my fire drinker can get in. Raspa Dankness is gonna kill our Boon Seder. That's okay. I take six damage. Alright, go to combat, get in with the fire drinker. Cast Bone Crusher. All right. Please don't make us discard cards here, dude. I want to not get these freaking affliction triggers because we're going to die in two turns. Grasp of Dankness again. Come on. They're in top deck mode. Don't draw discard. Don't draw Davriel. They drew a land. All right, cool. Don't. Okay. Oh, no. They found it. Man. But they're empty handed now. No cards. They have no cards. They got Castle Lockthwain. They have Castle Lockthwain, but I can't play anything here. So I'm going down to five. There's another Bone Crusher. All right, let's pump with Fire Drinker and get him for three. All right, gonna be a tight race. Come on, don't find anything. They're gonna Castle Lockthwain. Going back up to seven cards in hand. They found another land. And what's your last card? Nothing. And I don't get a trigger. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, there's a Boon Seder. That gives me lethal. Okay, let's go for this. So let's just play Fire Drinker. All right, let's just attack with Fire Drinker. Okay, so so now I just flash in Boon Seder and I'm win. And I have backup. If they make me discard a card, I'll still have two. Oh, they found another land. Windsleaf Siphoner is fine. Oh, no, zero cards? Oh, Boon Seder for the win. Come on. I swear, if you cast a Lockthwain and you find a Fatal Push. Alright. Um, so, Stomp. Yeah, they could find a push and live. I swear to goodness. Yeah! Oh, that was scary. That was terrifying. Oh man, we barely just barely snuck it out. The the flash the flash beats catching them off guard. We got a game here against Dre Warts, and we're gonna be on the play with some Gallia Seder Zoo. And I'm gonna keep that hand. It's not super aggressive, but one drop into two drop attack for two is okay enough.
Mana Confluence is less fun. You can't Rashad and port it to Lava Dart your opponent. What? Fortified Village. Okay, Fortified Village is scary because it could be... Okay, you know, I drew a Bushwhacker. That kind of makes me tempted to save my Seder, but that's kind of cute. I'll draw another cheap thing to do. All right, let's just play the Fire Drinker. Pump the thing. All right, so the jig is up. We're on Gallia. You know it. So Fortified Village is kind of terrifying because it could be Boggles. So if they play a, a Basilla Tower Archer or whatever it's called, Basilica, I would be kind of scared. Because then they're just going to like Unflinching Courage or Gift of Orzova and then we just lose. But we do have Sideboard Destructive Revelries and Cinder Mines, so we could deal with it. And also Tarkus Command's basically a skull crack. Ooh, they did nothing. Oh, that is perfect. Pell Collector, and then I can Surge a Bushwhacker. Pump on the Pell Collector. Give the whole team a little bit of a boost. Oh no, I stacked it wrong, so I didn't get a counter. Dang. We should, we should still be good, though. I have a lot of beef. I missed out on one damage, or two overall, but it shouldn't matter. Uh, at least I don't think it will. So I think we're getting this since the opponent didn't play a turn two Basilica. Seal away. So it's Green White Enchantress. So this is actually a very scary matchup because if they get up to, um, what do you call that thing? If they get up to uh, Sphere of Safety, I'll be terrified. Get in with everything. And Questing Beast dodges Seal Away. It's that good. Alright, what you gonna do to live here? What you gonna do to live? Show me. Is it a Courser? I can beat a Courser. Yep, alright, they scoop it up. So this is, like, despite how easily we won there, this is still terrifying. But, we got Destructive Revelry and Cinder Mines, and I feel like Chandra's pretty good here too. And, you know, Scab Clan is actually not bad. Scab Clan's not bad. Uh, roast could be useful. They do have a lot of those cheap little... <coughs> cheap little things. Domri's Ambush I kind of like too, because they're going to have, like, Satessan Champions and things of that nature. So let's bring in that. Let's cut Gore Clan Rampager. Um, Colothus is actually kind of, I don't know, a little slow. Let's cut the Bushwhacker on the draw. Wild Slashes are good. Stop, like, but... Bone Crusher does hit their their effects, their little cheapener effects. At one Gallia, one experiment, one. Um, you know, I don't know about Chandra here actually. Let's just go two Domri's ambushes. The sheep thing, yeah. The the Nyx Fleece Ram dies to roast, but they, and they probably will have Nyx Fleece Ram, which will be annoying. So, what if I, you know, let's cut one Brawler. I really don't know. Cut an Atarkus Command and cut, um, cut another Experiment one. All right, whatever. Just random things. We'll do it like that. Clothis actually won't have anything to exile from the graveyard. So let's actually cut Clothis and bring back in an Experiment one and an Atarkus Command. Oh, it's too late. It already submitted. And that's going to be a mulligan because we got zero Manaz. Zero Manaz. And this could be good if I hit my second land because I go Pell Collector, Burning Tree, Burning Tree, and to Stomp Your Dude. So yeah, if I get my second land, it's not terrible, but I would really need my third land to actually do something. Do I really want to go to five? Yeah, I'm going to keep this. Bottom boon, satyr. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's up, El Harino? I like that. Pious Wayfarer. Okay, so whenever enchantment enters, it gets a 1-1 one, one counter. Creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. So it's a Siona deck. Okay, I see you. And I did get my land. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to throw out Pell Collector here, and the next turn I'll just go Burning Tree, Burning Tree, into Stomp. Alright, you got a Sram or something? Starfield Mystic. Okay, that's going to die. Oh, Burning Tree, Burning Tree, into Brawler is nice, but I'm definitely going to Stomp here.
Triggs, Triggs. Into Stomp on the Starfield. Come on, give me a land so I go Voltaic Wild Slash. That'd be great. I expect them to just play Siona here. I, I'm very heavily thinking they're a Siona deck because I see that they're trying to make a bunch of tokens with Siona and then pump them with this guy. So that, that'd be the only reason for them to run this guy. And I expect them to have Saram as well to like draw cards off of their Auras and maybe Satessan Champion as well. Like Shock here? Shocking? If they shock here, they're going to play either Satessan Champion or Siona, but they didn't, so... Yeah. Destiny... Oh, that thing is actually kind of annoying. That thing's actually a little annoying. Alright, um... Well, I can still go Voltaic Brawler. Get some energies. Get in with the Pell Collector still. I would not mind trading with that Destiny Spinner. They're actually going to take it. Okay. See, now I wish I brought in the roasts. Vanishing Liggett. How are gonna deal with the brawler? Deals with the Pell Collector. Come on, give me Destructive Revelry. Give me Destructive Revelry, please! Galia. Ooh. Um... Yeah, I think I'll just suicide my board here and just Galia and swing all. It's not bad. Seems good to me. I'm gonna lose Galia, but I am gonna draw two cards and hopefully draw Destructive Revelry. Let's pay with the um, let's pay with the Brawler, pay our energy, even plus one plus one and trample, and Galia will say yes. We discard Pell Collector and draw another Pell Collector and a Questing Beast. Alright, so I need a couple more lands for that Questing Beast. They're gonna eat Gallia and take eight. Okay, down to seven. I like that. So out of virtual five because of Wild Slash. Another Banishing Light on the Voltaic Brawler. Come on, give me my lands. I want to get up to this questing beast. Gets in with that thing, realizing they're not going to block with it. Okay, I did hit my land. So I could two for one myself to kill this destiny spinner because it's really annoying. Or I could wild slash their um, pious wayfarer. Oh, I could have played bone crusher giant. Dang, that's actually a huge tempo loss there. I'm actually just gonna pass and hold up Wild Slash. I forgot this was here. I should have it like right here. Like right, right there, so I can remember. Okay, they're getting a little bit flooded. All right, I'm gonna Wild Slash their blocker. They're getting flooded, I gotta take advantage of that. Come on, land. The Gallia. Gallia's not bad, but I think I'm just gonna Bone Crusher here and pump Pell Collector and then just swing all. Get him down to three. Oh no, what's your last card? What does this guy have? Does he have an ability? Oh man. He can make a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, but they're at 5. I got a big boy here. And I have a questing beast on the way, hopefully. See, this is why Ashiok Nightmare's Muse would be a very annoying card, because two threes are really good at stopping aggro. Really good. Come on, land. Oh, that's not bad. Alright, let's go for it.
Going for game here. All right. Block time. Here we go. Three damage to you. You're at two. Pump the team. Got trample. That's game. Wait, what? What? Oh. Oh, no, wait. This doesn't have trample. Never mind. I always think he has trample. I always think he has trample. But we ate their whole board. And now there are two. I have a board they don't. They got three cards in hand. And... What do you got? Herald of the Pantheon. Courser. Okay, so they're staying alive, but not if I top deck a land for Questing Beast. Doom Wake would be very annoying. But good thing they don't have black mana. Gallia. Alright. Um, so let's go. I don't want to accidentally discard that, but I think I gotta get as many bodies on the board as possible, right? Alright. Let's just do it. Let's let's attack with everything. I'm sorry, Questing Beast, but I have burn spells to draw, and I need to draw a burn spell. They just scoop. They scoop it up to Gallia. All right, they didn't like me drawing cards. All right, sweet. We got there against uh, another deck that's meant to be an anti-aggro deck. You know, with things like like a bunch of these like seal away and spot removal banishing lights and then like this is life gain courser's life gain and a fat blocker but still they got a little bit flooded and we aggroed them out too quickly and all we need is the damage off the get-go to get them to a spot where they're vulnerable and that's what aggro tries to do before we get into the sped up rounds of the video i would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck or any cards really it would be awesome if you purchased through our deck list link down below that is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So in this first match, we're going up against Orzov Midrange. Um, I, they had a theme to their deck. I forget what it is right now, but we just completely trampled them over. In the first game, they're really fast before I had a chance to commentate it because that's basically what we are doing the entire video. Um, so now all we're really hoping for in this game is to deal with Gifted Aetherborns and like have an answer to them because that's the only thing we are really fearing out of their deck. Now... Since they have the Heliod, we're also really hoping they don't have a Ballista. And check this out. Right here at the last second that they're about to lose, they activate Castle Lockthwain, and they have just exactly enough mana to play Ballista. But they didn't have enough mana to give it lifelink, but then I top deck nothing after two sweepers. So we go on to game number three. And um, I'm on the play this time, and you know how this deck goes when it's on the play. And so they're really just looking for a way to survive. They play Murderous Riders. I draw Gruel Clan, Gruel Clan Rampager. Now, this is where I was thinking for a long time. So I decided to swing in that thing in Gore Clan to keep all three of my burning trees alive. They play another Murderous Rider, but I top deck the Atarkas Command to get there. So we got there against Black White Heliod combo. And we go on to game number two of the sped up games. Um, so this one was against, we'll wait and see. Uh, was this the Harden? No, the Harden Scales one was unsped up. So uh, this is against Blue White Spirits, and they didn't have their second turn lore, so that's good for me. And I, I've actually, like I always mention on the channel, if you've heard me talk about it before, I, I mentioned it a lot, but Spirits is the deck, the archetype that I have had the most success with out of a deck ever. And so I've played with Spirits a lot, and I can tell you from experience that the one thing that actually beats Spirits is it being out aggroed. Um, so Spirits is a great matchup against literally everything except decks that can out aggro it. And that is exactly what we were doing. We out aggro them and they couldn't really stay alive. They really didn't have an answer. Like even Spell Queller, while it does deal with a spell, it's not big enough to really block most of our guys. So we go to the next game and they have the turn two Supreme Phantom, but I have the Domri's Ambush at the ready to grow my dude, get in even more. 
and they have the Nabal Gas Herald tapping down our guys, but I'm able to uh, fry that thing down and they don't really have really chunky blockers and I have a really fat board state and I have a Tarkus Command and all of this stuff in my hand at the ready when they're very, very low. And a Tarkus Command is just gonna make me eat their entire board and they're at two and then they scoop it up. So we got there. And then we go on to the next sped up game. Now this one was against Abzan Hardened Scales. Now, not only were they hardened scales, like we're trying to harden scales up a ballista, but they had the Heliod. That's what the, the white splash was for, the Heliod combo. Now, we had a very, very, very slow hand. I ended up scooping it up um, without even playing anything because I had a hand that was double root bound crag. So that was easily the slowest hand I ever got in the entire stream. And then the next hand I get here is very slow as well because I don't really have anything to do until my four drops a lot. And I, I did have a couple things to like roast off and burn, but like it was a very sluggish hand. But uh, luckily they really didn't get a whole lot of things to do. They were just looking for a ballista and uh, we're able to just trample them over with our questing beast and whatnot. And then on to the last game. Now this one was pretty, pretty lucky on their part because I actually got like super super close to even though i had a mulligan down to five i got a pretty aggressive like draw off the top of my library and a roast to kill the winding stricter but they followed up with two more winding constrictors and right at the very last turn they had to live because i had a backup gallia the very last turn they had to live they found their ballista so it takes a combo to beat us and then we go on to the last game of the video this is against bant midrange it's actually banned humans. Now they have a whole set of, of Reflector Mages and a whole set of Heron's Grace Champions. And Heron's Grace Champion is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three hill giant flash lifelinker that gives your humans plus 1 plus 1 in lifelink until end of turn. And so uh, we actually ended up... I think we won that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we won that one. But we go into the next game and here's where we find out that they have Heron's Grace Champion. So I'm actually really terrified of this matchup because it is literally anti-aggro dot deck because they have Reflector Mages, they got Deputy Detentions, I assume. We didn't see it. They got Dramokus Commands as removal and then the mass lifelink effect. So I'm gonna be real with you here. We actually lost this game, but out of all the things, we, we trampled over so many people today, so many archetypes and, you know, just so many different kinds of things. But what it actually takes to beat us is hardened skills finding their ballista which is an infinite combo that just we didn't have a removal spell at the moment for so it takes an infinite combo and a deck with mono reflector mages and mass lifelink effects to actually beat us and that's saying a lot this deck has just fought through so much and it actually takes an absolute counter to actually beat us so the power level of this deck is really up there and i've been really 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 impressed with it uh, you'll hear me talk about it more in the outro about the things I would change. Uh, mainly, Boon Seder has not been all that impressive this league, um, so that would be replaced. Maybe some more cheap burn. You know, mess around with it, have your fun with it, but yeah. So it took an infinite combo and mass lifelink effects to actually take us down. So you should have no problem getting a pretty good record at your local tournament or whatever. So let's go on to the wrap up. Hope you enjoyed. So we ended up with eight total wins. Oh my goodness, guys. Gruel aggro, like I keep repeating myself, but it's better than it than it's been. I mean, this is the I mean, Pioneer's fresh and new, but it's just like the best it's been right now. And uh in my opinion, like one of the best color combinations you can go in uh Pioneer right now. It's just like it's got so much elements in it that lets you compete against the variety of things. Like you got so much like varieties of burn spells right now. You got like your things like Stomp and Wild Slash is like main board stuff. Lightning Strike if you want. Like you got your sideboard. You got a plethora of sideboard burn spells like Lava Coil, Roast, Fry, Rending Volley, Magma Spray, any kind of burn you want to run. You got a bunch of different plans you can do in the main board. You can go heavier like Glory Bringers and Chandra's like Chonky Red does. Um, rekindling phoenixes, rabble masters, grum ghoulies. Like, honestly, I really like the Gallia package. Gallia with the satyrs worked out so well. Like, if you play a Gallia, it turns your future fire drinker satyrs into actual threats. Um, Boom Satyr was okay. Honestly, he wasn't insane. Uh, you could run Gallia alone just with the fire drinker, and I think Gallia is fine enough on her own to be ran in Gruel Aggro. So, Boon Satyrs were, were good, but I think you can just run better things in that slot. Honestly, I'd want to put some more cheap burn like that. 
you know, like a couple more wild slashes, maybe a couple lightning strikes or something. Or maybe go up to the fourth Voltaic Brawler just to have more things to do off of Burning Tree because there were some times where we had Burning Tree and we were like, please deck, give us something that we can play off of the Burning Tree. I wanted that to be more consistent. We got seven total things, but I think you need more than that. So I would definitely find a way to go up to like the fourth Brawler and maybe put another cheap burn spell and do it like that. Um, but yeah, Gruul Aggro. Like I said, so many different ways you can build it. Have your fun with it. Have your fun with it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest the gameplay every other day. Let me know what deck you want to see in the comments down below. Um, go to the social media links down below as well as a link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream every Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Honestly, share this video with your friends who like aggro decks. Like, this is going to be a really fun archetype to start throwing around in Pioneer and just get it out there make it popular i really think this deck can really pop off in the format um thank you all the sponsors the patrons and the twitch chat and we're gonna get on out of here thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next video peace out